Welcome to WRC 19, the World Radio Communication Conference in Shama Sheikh in Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Eric Alex, who is uh, the chair of the World Meteorological Organization's steering group on radio frequency coordination. Eric, uh, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to start off by talking to you a little bit about uh, WMO's presence here at uh, WRC 19. What are some of the topics that are most of interest to you? Many topics. We are very interested in many topics. The main one, I can say, it's Agenda Item 113, which related to IMD, 5G technology in the system, to try to find new allocation for this uh, mobile system. First one, the second one is more of a satellite issue and to try to define certain limits in order to ensure the long-term usage of a satellite, meteorological satellite system. So what's the connection between 5G and meteorology? <laughs> Directly, not. We can't see. However, the future band proposed to uh, be a 5G technology are very near our band we use for passive observation per satellite. And the main issue is there. Okay, this technology use band, as I said, adjacent to this uh, meteorological observation satellite. And what we call the out of band of this uh, emission can fail in our band, passive band, and create some, uh, some problem. So everybody here is, is struggling to get their piece of the spectrum, is that right? Yeah, you know, the spectrum is more and more dense. So everyone wants to try to find some way in order to develop and we fully understand that, develop new system, new technology. It's the demand. And what are the major things that help you in terms of uh, weather forecasting? We have many systems. We have a satellite, of course. It's, uh, I can say, the, the new system that provides a lot of data, collection data. But we have also radars. We have radio sounds, uh, wind provider radars, many things like that. So it's a combination of all these systems that permit her to have a weather forecasting for short term, middle term and long term and in particular for the climate monitoring climate. I was going to say what about climate change itself uh, how, how is that affecting you? So, in fact the climate change is what the main important band we use it's the observation passive observation per satellite for the climate change. So we use the natural radiation of the earth and the atmosphere in order to see how the, the change is in the, during the decades and it's the main one of the main problem here because we made since uh, 40, 50 years some satellite data collection. And now, if we change the environment of this natural uh, atmosphere and Earth radiation, we will not be able to use anymore what we collected since long years. So it's why it's important for us, for the climate. And in terms of uh, this conference itself, this is not the first time that you, you've attended uh, this conference. I think you, you've been here about, is this your sixth conference? Is yeah, that right? yeah, more than 20 years. <laughs> okay. so, so have you seen many changes to this and do you think that uh, it should evolve? Yeah, in fact, the pressure since, uh, I can say, some years, 10 years, the pressure on the spectrum usage are more and more. So it's why we are uh, faced to, uh, to protect more and more our, our spectrum. Uh, however, the, uh, it's always the same approach. Uh, during all the preparation, there are some discussion, hard discussion, and when we arrive at WRC, at the end, we'd always, or we try to go to a compromise. Uh, I think people, we, we are, since the beginning, since 2015, when this agenda item was approved, we never oppose the use or to try to find new allocation for mobile, of course. But with the only constraint is to protect our observation system. So we heard since the beginning of this uh, conference some uh, proposal, very interesting proposal, which proposed to, <laughs> to protect our, our band in a, in a good manner. So uh, we, we encourage all, all administration to support this compromise in order to everyone to be happy at the end. And in terms of the work of ITU, how important uh, and relevant is the work of ITU to the WMO? It's very important. WMO, the aim of WMO is to uh, cooperate between all the uh, meteorological agencies, national meteorological agencies. All meteorological national agencies have not the possibility to, uh, to, uh, to provide people to follow in detail all this discussion. And we know where the discussion we are technically uh, high technology uh, uh, discussion. So we need to follow 
all, uh, all along the, uh, the study period, all the discussion we, we have in different uh, study group in, in ITRA. And for that, WMO organized, and it's uh, the, the aim of uh, the group I'm sharing, uh, organize uh, this every year or two times per year meeting with all these uh, national agency in order to try to find a way and to have common position in order for each of these agency to go to their administration and explain what is the issue and propose a solution, of course. From where you sit, what will be the best outcomes from this particular conference? I think the best one will be to find a real compromise that protect our interest, in particular regarding the 5G, because as I said, it, we, we made a lot of investment with satellites since decades. It will continue because, you know, a satellite is not only for six months or one year, it's 20, 30 years times. So it's very important investment. So it's, it's the main issue. But we have also interest, and in particular, we will have to define a new agenda item for the next conference in 2023. I don't know if we'll be always there, but I hope. And uh, of course, it's very interesting to, uh, to see what, what will be discussed in the next four years. Well, thank you very much for joining us here in the studio. Hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon, maybe in a little bit less than four years' time. But, hey, Galex, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Nice.